Now, theoretically, we've done this before in some class, but I also a thousand percent know that when you went home, you probably used Desmos to do these sort of regressions. That's fine, that's great. It's just gonna get too complicated in my class to remember all the ways to type a regression on Desmos. So we're gonna practice using the graphing calculator. If you go home, you still wanna use Desmos, great, awesome, that's fine. But we're gonna practice with the calculators in my class. Now, this example one just jumps right into it. It says the age in weeks and weight in kilograms of five randomly selected babies from a particular pediatrician's office are listed in the table above. A linear regression, y equal to a plus bx, notice the order it's in, a plus bx, can be used to model these data, where y is the predicted weight of the baby in kilograms that is x week old. We want to write an equation of the linear model for this data. Okay, a couple things you need to look for in these types of problems is the type of function that you're writing. Because when we choose our function type in our calculator, we need to make sure we're choosing the correct one. It does say linear regression, but it specifically has it in not the order you're used to. You're used to mx plus b or ax plus b, and this says a plus bx. So keep that in mind. And then flip your paper over for a second. I have all of the steps for building regressions on these calculators listed here. I'm adding a step that you may not have ever done before, so make sure we actually read these steps. Step one is to turn on the stat diagnostics from the mode menu. For later and, and for the you ever take statistics, you're going to want those. Okay, that's just helpful to have them turned on. It's step zero. You could still get through most of these questions without it being turned on, but we wanna make sure that we're looking at all our diagnostics from statistics when we are using these calculators. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna press the stat button, which this arrow is kind of pointing at the delete button, so sorry. But look, I circled the stat button. You're gonna press the stat button and then you're gonna to go to edit. We did this last class. We entered all of the data on list one, list two. Does all of this step sound familiar? Step two is the one we want to focus on, though, because step two is your variety show. Step two is where you have to make a decision on this calc menu because there are lots of types of functions that we can write, lots of types of regressions. You have your regular linear regression, ax plus b. You have your quadratic, your cubic, your quartic, your linear regression in the form a plus bx, Ding, ding, ding. That's what we're going to want on this first question. Uh, natural log regression. And if you keep scrolling down, we have all sorts of types of regressions that are down there. Exponential, sine. We will get to all of those later. But we've got a lot of things going on in this calculator that will be very helpful for us. I'm walking through all the steps first, and then I'll let you actually try this problem. Here's the step you may not have had before. When you go to stat calculate and choose the correct regression, I need you to do this step right here. On store regression equation, you need to type Y1 because it's going to store your regression equation in Y1 if you put that there, meaning it will graph the function for you and you don't have to retype the numbers. So to get a Y1 to show up, you press alpha trace enter. Once you do all that and you press calculate, it will give you a screen that looks like this. The R and R squared are your diagnostics from statistics, but we want to fill in this formula. So our formula would say these numbers, y equal to 3.545 plus 0.185x, which is actually the answer to the question, okay? So I went through all the steps and that was way too fast. Flip back to the other side of the page and let's see if we can do those steps for part A of this first problem on our notes. Just do part A because I have tricks for parts B and C that I want to show you. So for this particular one, which option are I, am I choosing from this screen? We're choosing option eight. So maybe make that a note to yourself that this particular one is option eight that says linear regression, but in the form A plus BX. So once we run that regression, we would get that the formula here, which I'm going to use the letters from the table, we're going to say that the weight in regards to time would be equal to 3.545 plus 0 0.185 times T. Those can be X's and Y's, just like they are in your calculator, but since this is a real-world problem, I'm going to use the letters from the real-world problem. Their input value is T the output value is W of T, so I use those. Make sense? Okay, 
Part B says, using the linear model, what is the predicted weight of a baby that is 10 weeks old? So this 10 weeks that they gave you right here, is that an input or an output value? Input. So we want to plug it in. I'm asking you to, you to do W of 10, but we're not going to work smarter. We're going to work harder. In your calculator, in the home screen, you are going to type Y1 of 10. How do I do that? Great question. So glad you asked. You're going to go to the home screen, which is second quit to get to the home screen, right? You press alpha trace enter open parentheses 10. This is telling the calculator, I want you to plug 10 into the function that I exported into y1, which is why I have you store the regression equation there. When you press enter, it evaluates the function for you. This is very helpful when you have a very complicated like cubic or quartic function. That's a lot of x's to plug in. You're going to get lost somewhere. Are we going to have the calculator during the test? The AP test, yes. Oh, okay. Then, and the quiz on next class? Yes. Okay. Yeah, your PSAT, you have to have your own. Seniors, when you take an SAT, though, I am the calculator lady, so you can check a calculator out from me for a Saturday administration. They are the older ones. They're not these nice new ones. But beggars can't be choosers, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Part C. It's the same thing. It's just not back. Like, these are backlit. They're, like, color screens. The, uh, they're, like, old. They're more, like, you see those yellow ones over there? They're, like, those. They're just actually older than that one, too. They still do everything, the ones that I can check out for Saturday SATs to you. It is what it is. Okay, part C says the weight of a sixth baby is 5.3 kilograms. Using the linear model, what is the age and week of this baby? Okay. It, did they give me an input or an output? Output. So I actually have to do some solving here because I want my output to say 5.3. And I'm finding the input value that creates it. So I'm setting the equation equal to 5.3. And I'm going to solve for t. Old-fashioned solving steps here. What do I do first? Minus. Yep. Yes, great. So we subtract 3.545 from both sides, which would end up with 1.755 on the right-hand side, and zero, that's the left, left-hand side, and 0.185t on the right-hand side. What's the last step here to solve for t? Divide. Divide. You have a calculator. Obviously, you can do all of this. I'm trusting you can type that in. 1.755 divided by 0 0.185, we would get 9.4865 equal to t. As a note, I guess I haven't said this yet, for my class, you're always going to round to four decimals because it will eliminate the rounding errors that lost students' points over the summer. It, everything in the class on the test will say round to three decimals. We're going to round to four. Okay, we're going to be an aggressive amount of rounders. We're rounding to four decimals when possible for me, always. Okay? During the test two. Oh. Say again? During the test two. Yes, it will say round to three. Ignore it, round to four. Because we can truncate at three and you won't lose out on as a scorer. We stopped reading after the third decimal, even if you had extra stuff behind it. So we round to four. We won't mess up. Okay, example two. It says the table above provides data for seven ordered pairs using a logarithmic regression, which I know we haven't studied those yet, but we can still read in, in information, right? Using a logarithmic regression, construct a model for... Model f for y as a function of x. Write an expression for f of x in the form a plus b times natural log of x, where a and b are constants. Then use the model predi to predict y when x is equal to 5. I honestly want to stop here, and I want to see what you can do. You have every step you need to do both parts of this problem. Even though we don't know much about logarithmics yet, we will get there. You still have the skills to do it. So I'm going to stop talking. I want to see what we can do. Once we type it in, we want to go choose the correct uh, regression here. And this one says that we want a logarithmic regression in the form with the natural log. So if we're making this decision here, we want to choose option 9. Maybe write that down for yourself that this one is option 9 that says natural log regression. Again, we'll study logs in, an, in our next unit, so like no big deal if you don't know what that means. We always store the regression equation in Y1, so alpha trace enter, and then we calculate. 
Again, I don't have my diagnostics turned on because I forgot to turn it on again. But these numbers is what we should have gotten. So when we write our equation, we would say that y would be equal to 2.8636 plus 1.8185 times the natural log of x. So this is what it would look like. Again, you don't know what any of this means yet because we haven't studied natural log, but we trust the process. Now, the second part here wants me to predict the future. They gave me an input value. In part two of example one, part B, what did we do to predict the future? How, what did I have you type in? Yes, because we want to evaluate the Y1 that you just did. You just saved this in Y1. We want to evaluate it at five. So I go back to the home screen and I type alpha trace enter parentheses five, and it's going to evaluate that function for me, which means that our answer here, our output when the input is five will probably be 5.7903. Again, we round to four decimals, even if the question tells you to round to three, because we can truncate at three as a reader and it keeps us from missing out on rounding errors. All right, example three is a challenge question. Example three says, the table above provides data. <laughs> Write an equation of the regression model for the data in the table and then predict the future. Did it tell us what type of data this is? No. Oh no, we have to choose the correct type of regression for ourselves. So let's think back to last class. What did we do last class to see the equation to know what kind of regression we wanted to write? Uh, well, we could, but are these equal length input value intervals? No. Eek, so it's a hard one. What did we do last class on that example when we used the calculator? Oh, that was Friday, I know. We, we did do a weird Zoom, yes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this data in our table again. And we're going to turn on the stat plot to see what the data looks like. Okay, so join me on this one. We're going to go to stat. We're going to go to edit. We're going to type in all of these lists. So I'm going to clear. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to clear. And I'm going to type in that whole table. 0, 0 0.4, 0 0.9. That's the wrong. That just said 0. 0 0.9. 1.2, 1.7, 2.2, 2 2.9, 3.4. Yes, you must use all of the data pieces. I feel that question coming. We need all of the pieces of information we can to get the best regression line. Me? Oh, I'm using a keypad too, which same setup as you on your calculators. But then last class, okay, we wanted to see what this data looks like. What did we do? We did, but we had to do something before we did that. It was alpha trace. Mm, that's a good one. How do I go back? Here's our hint. What am I pointing at on the screen? We go to Y1. What did I do on the screen? We have to turn on plot one. Now, if you notice, your equation from example two is sitting here in Y1. Is that going to annoy us? It's going to annoy me. I'm going to clear that one out. I don't want to see that. I just want to see my data. Problem is, if I just press graph after turning on the plot, it looks like this. You can adjust the window, but zoom what? Zoom stat. We put a bunch of statistics in here so we can zoom stat. What kind of data is this? Let's now that we've made this decision. Go to our stat calculate menu and write the regression. So you can take it from here. We see that this data makes essentially a quadratic shape. So now we know we're gonna use option five, which is the quadratic regression. But you got it from here. I want you to finish this problem. Go ahead and write the regression model and then use that regression model pr to predict the future. Now you have all these numbers that your calculator has spit out at you. Remember, you're putting them in the order that's on the screen. It gives you the format. This is why I like doing regressions on the calculator over Desmos. You don't have to remember all of the pieces. You just put the pieces where they go. This says that the equation would be y equal to negative 4.8832 times x squared 
plus 15.9580x plus 4.9956. And then if we're predicting the future, we go back to our home screen. We go alpha trace inner. And we're checking when this is equal to, I lost the number, 2.5. Thank you so much. 2.5. And voila, we get our output to be 14.3709. So when we do y1 of 2.5, we would get 14.3709. Major questions, comments, or concerns before we draw our notes to a close? Oh, that's it? Yeah. I thought that was the back. The back was the steps. Oh yeah, there's, I guess there's one thing on the back to talk about. The last little box that I didn't talk about when I flipped the page over the first time is just reminding you how to predict the future. Oh. So if you forget those steps, that's down there. Okay. I'm saying predict the future because you're using the line to estimate data. And in my, in my head, it sounds like predicting the future, which is more fun. This is not the future though, because 2.5 is here-ish on my graph. So does the fact that we get 14.3709 make sense for these outputs? Like if 2.5 is between these two things, our output needs to be between these two things. Does that make sense? Okay, if we were extrapolating data, meaning actually predicting the future, we'd be plugging a number like five into the function somewhere outside of the data set. So I just call everything predicting the future because it's kind of fun. But we're estimating values.